Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to this what and why segment of the Absolute Sound on YouTube. Today we've got a quite interesting product in for test and I'm going to go over a little bit of the physical attributes of the product. The FedEx man just dropped it off so I to save time, took it out of the box. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the unboxing experience and then we'll get on to what this product is. So, today we have the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Amplifier. This is a power amp. Uh, it's rated at 250 watts per channel into 8 ohms. I'll cover more of that in a bit uh, but as far as the unboxing experience goes there's not a lot to talk about uh, Orchard Audio uh, has seen fit to package this very nicely in these sleeves it's double bagged in sleeves and then there's styrofoam that holds the product in the box and that is it. Okay? Tim Cook and the product designers at Apple had nothing to do with this. It's not beautiful. It's not amazing. It's not over the top. It does what it needs to do. This is packaging only an engineer could love, but frankly, I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because when you're trying to make a product like this, which retails for $24.99 burning extra money on packaging especially with a product as big as a power amplifier might drive the price up by a couple hundred dollars I don't know about you I'm going to take it out of the box once or twice maybe uh, and I really don't want to spend an extra $200 for a brief moment of Christmas morning it's just me if you need something fancier, there are lots of options with mega packaging. Okay, let's take a look at the amplifier. It is a power amp. Yes, indeed. And that means it has an ONOFF switch. Yep, that's what you see right here. Let me put it down so I don't drop it. That's the on-off switch. Uh, black faceplate. Very nice, I'd say, three-eighths of an inch thick aluminum faceplate, so it's, it's solidly built. At the same time, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, and, you know, I can spin it around no problem. So, actually, it's kind of a nice thing. Uh, it's cool to have a power amp that weighs 90 pounds and you have to drag around and you can barely pick it up and you drop it on your hands and uh, the heat sinks slice your skin open. Uh, but the attraction of that wears out over time. Uh, having something that can fit easily within your equipment rack and it's easy to move around when you need to do hookups or change cables or something like that. I frankly think is a feature. Okay, uh, what we have here on the back, just so you can see, there's a little more action going on here. We have binding posts and uh, I specified this one to have uh, XLR balanced inputs. You can get it with single-ended RCA inputs, but uh, you can also order it with XLR inputs and use an RCA to XLR adapter. So you're kind of good to go either way. Uh, frankly, I like balanced cables. Uh, we'll talk about that at a different time. So I had it set up with balanced inputs. Now. Uh, Let's talk about why we're looking at this amp. The Star Crimson is an interesting design that I hypothesize allows Orchard Audio to build a very high quality 
very high powered amplifier at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, to get this kind of power output, which in the case of the 4 ohm speakers I'll be using is 500 watts per channel, so that's a thousand watts total. To get that kind of power output with a Class A B amp normally would cost something like two times as much. Of course, it's high-end audio, so it depends on who's doing the design and who's doing the making. I'm sure to get 500 watts per channel you could spend a lot more than that and possibly there are a number of alternatives that are at this kind of price point. But I like the fact since I'm working on a complete system concept that's built around very high value amplifiers, very high value speakers, very high value sources, I like the idea that this fits within that kind of package and that might work for you, might not be what you need. But in this case, I like value, so cool. Uh, as I said, 500 watts per channel into 4 ohms. I specified this as the dual mono extra capacitance power supply setup. So this one actually has a retail price of $34.99. That's to make sure that with uh, low impedance load, uh, I can put out the maximum power without uh, any degradation of the sound other than what the circuit itself does. Which brings us to the other major point about the Star Crimson. The Star Crimson is a Class D amplifier. Yep, that's part of why it's lightweight. But we should ask ourselves, why are Class D amplifiers light? Part of that is because uh, they tend to use switching power supplies, and switching power supplies are inherently lighter. No big chunk of iron in the transformer, for example. Um, but Class D amplifiers also tend to be lighter because of a really important feature, which is that they're very efficient. Class D amplifiers are typically about 80% efficient. That means to get a certain amount of power out, you need about 1.25 that power level going in. Uh, so in this case, we're going to try to produce a thousand watts total. So we should have a wall outlet capable of 1250 watts. 1,000 watts times 1.25 is 1,250. Uh, that might sound impressive, that might not sound impressive, but a couple of key points. One, your typical home wall outlet is on a circuit with a 15 amp breaker. We're in the United States, 120 volts times 15 amps is 1,800 total watts. Only having a power amplifier that requires 1,250 watts means we can run this off of a normal household circuit and still have extra power for the other items that are bound to be part of our system. You're going to have sources. You might have a server or a CD drive and a D to A converter and uh, switches for your network and frankly, some people like listening in the dark. That's not my deal. I like to have lights. Lights draw power. They're often on the same circuit with your hi-fi. At the end of the day, I like to have a little bit of headroom just to be sure I can produce the full power of the amplifier. Uh, okay, so we've got the fact that this is well set up to be a amplifier that can produce its full output. That might sound like a normal thing, but the most common circuit in transistor amplifiers is Class AB, not Class D. Class AB amplifiers are typically more in the range of 50% efficient. If I wanted to do the 1000 watts that the Star Crimson can do, but do it with a Class AB amplifier, now I need two times 
the power available to the amp to produce full power. That means that I need 2,000 watts at the wall. I have 1,800 watts at the wall, so I'm a little bit on the edge of the performance of the circuit, and I have no headroom for my turntable, phono preamp, uh, streamer, D to A converter, CD player, preamp, whatever other ancillary equipment I've got requires. Um, again, your breaker can tolerate transients, and that's really why we want the power. We're not trying to run average powers of uh, levels of a thousand watts. We need it for transients. Your breaker can certainly go over its rating, will go over its rating without tripping. Uh, but to be conservative, I kind of like the fact that there's headroom here. By the way, just to complete this uh, brief treatise on power amplifier efficiency, if you're using a class A amplifier, and class A amplifiers can be lovely, uh, you're usually talking about more like 20% efficient. So to do a uh, thousand watts with a class A amplifier, you'd have two issues to deal with. One is you need 5,000 watts from the wall, and that means special wiring for your house. You might have that. You might be an electrician. Uh, you might like drilling holes in the wall. On the other hand, you might not want to go that far and suffer that expense. The other thing is you end up with a space heater. If you think about it, if you've got a thousand watts coming out of your Class A amplifier and 5,000 watts coming in, 4,000 watts is being dissipated as heat. A 4,000 watt heater is a big deal. That's not necessarily the greatest thing. It's winter now, okay fine, but uh, not ideal in a lot of climates for uh, the comfort of the listeners. I've had Class A amplifiers and I had to keep them in a separate room to avoid heating the listening room up to uh, what I consider to be an intolerable level. Again, not trying to sell you off of Class A, wonderful circuit concept, but it does have its downsides and it needs special preparation. Okay, so it's a very efficient amplifier uh, and I think that's a wonderful feature. The other thing that's really interesting about the Star Crimson and that I'll be interested to test drive in our review is the Star Crimson uses a new, relatively new, kind of output transistor called gallium nitride. You can read more about the circuitry and the gallium nitride transistors and a little bit of the background of how the design was done in this issue of the Absolute Sound. It's uh, issue 323 for reference purposes. Dick Olcher does a review of the little brother of this amplifier. And if you don't happen to need 250 or 500 watts, you might be just as interested or more interested in that if you like the ideas I'm talking about. But anyway, gallium nitride is a transistor type that allows Class D amplifiers to run their output circuits, which are switched. I'll talk more about that too, but which are switched at a very high frequency. In this case, I believe it's around 800 kilohertz. That means you're switching the output at 40 times the top of the audio band, and that allows the artifacts that have to be filtered out to be filtered out with a relatively simple filter circuit, and those relatively simple filter circuits often sound better. We've learned that in uh, some of the work with D to A converters that we've done. Again, nothing is a guarantee in audio. There are all sorts of system interactions. I'm talking about generalities here, but it's nice that it's a simple circuit and that helps keep the cost of the amplifier down. Uh, gallium nitride, because it allows the the switching frequency to be pushed up higher may address one of the 
And really, I think the main bugaboo historically of Class D circuits, which is people have sometimes criticized their high frequency sound quality. Some people feel that Class D amplifiers are a little bit edgy or a little bit brittle sounding at high frequencies. I've reviewed a number of Class D amplifiers and I can agree sometimes that's an issue. I think it's largely a function of the implementation of the Class D circuit because I've heard other Class D amplifiers that have beautiful pristine highs and uh, I, I, that's led me to the conclusion that the circuit implementation is really important. What we have here is a circuit implementation that's built around a new device that allows a theoretically better circuit implementation. So what we want to see in the review is does that actually deliver uh, the results. I will be testing the Star Crimson with MagnaPan speakers, which you may be able to see in the corner of the frame here. Uh, I'll be using the MagnaPan LRS. I encourage you to read Jonathan Vallon's review of the LRS to know why I consider that to be one of the great high-value speakers on the market. Um, but, great as it is, MagnaPan speakers have an interesting characteristic which is they tend to be able to tolerate very high power and that as power goes up they tend to sound better and better and better. So it's not so much that they're inefficient, they, they're not high efficiency speakers, but it's that they're an interesting combination of I would say medium to low efficiency together with the capacity to handle quite a bit of power and therefore they just sound better and better and better as you go up in power level. I've heard demonstrations put on by MagnaPan themselves uh, using 2400 watts and with 2400 watts of amplification the sound was superb. Now in a system you never completely know what's causing that to be the case Maybe the MagnaPan guys are geniuses at setup. Maybe it happened to be a really good room. Maybe the front end was genius. I, you can't know. But I have to say I've heard lots of MagnaPan demonstrations, and this one was outstanding, and I noticed the possible correlation with using very high power on the input side. So I'm excited to see if for, uh, in audiophile terms, a pretty reasonable price, we can come up with a high power amplifier with uh, out the Class D sometimes deficits of uh, high frequency graininess or brittleness or stridency together with the signature Class D benefits of very transparent mid-range and super well controlled tight bass. Uh, I'm waiting for some equipment to arrive that I think will fit well with the Star Crimson uh, and it's the end of the COVID era we hope uh, and uh, there are supply chain problems all over the place so some of the pieces that I need to go with this are uh, on the way. Uh, the particular thing I need is a power cable that fits with this. The product doesn't ship with a power cable. Uh, again, I think that's a very reasonable idea. Why pay for something you're probably not going to use? You're probably going to use an aftermarket power cable that fits with your power distributor or your uh, power conditioner. And I don't want a power cable that's too long uh, the thing is basically an antenna, and uh, I'd rather keep it short. Uh, I'd rather keep it short for current delivery purposes, although with 10 gauge wire, I'm not sure, again, that it matters. I'd also rather keep my power cable as short as I can uh, so that I don't end up with a giant rat's nest of you know, one inch diameter cables uh, behind my equipment rack. So. I like the fact that I get to pick the cable 
and uh, in this case I've done that and I'm looking forward to it arriving, plugging it into the Star Crimson and uh, taking a listen on these Magnapan LRSs which with 100 watts per channel sound really good so uh, I'm super excited to see what they'll do with 500 watts. All right, that's our what and why on the Orchard Audio Star Crimson. You can visit their website, as I said, check out Dick Olsher's coverage review of the little brother to this uh, amp, and I'll come back as soon as I can with some first thoughts on how it sounds, and we'll take it from there. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, remember to visit theabsolutesound.com for hundreds of reviews of products, and we'll continue to uh, highlight some special products on the Absolute Sound YouTube channel. Have a good day.